Hi guys, welcome back to the flip side of mud and uh, I'm going to share this story with you guys. A friend of mine just happened to remind me about it and um, it brought up some memories of the story and it's really, really freaky and you guys should hear it and you guys give me feedback on the, in the comments on what you guys think. Y'all think I'm full of crap because I promise this is 100% accurate and 100% true. Believe it or not, it's like a ghost. You see one, you believe them. If you, ain't, if you haven't seen one, you don't believe it. But trust me, this story, if you can see it in my eyes, this story is 1,000% true. There's no real way I would make this up. So please, listen to this story. You guys tell me what you think. If you're similar like me, if you've had the similar issues, and you think it's real. Or if you don't think it's real, put it in the comments. It's okay, either way. Everybody has their own opinion. Okay, so growing up, I don't, you know, I don't see dead people or none of that stuff. But growing up, you know, all, all my life, all the way up till now, I have this, uh, you know, everybody has deja vu, but I have an overwhelming deja vu. It's it's daily, weekly. It's it's insane. Um, I dream stuff all the time, uh, especially the naps are the craziest because they're like really short. Um, and then weeks go by or days go by or months go by. And I live in those exact situations I dreamed. I mean, I'll be standing there and it's like walking into my dream. It's completely insane. And this has happened my whole life. Not only do I prophesize future events, I can predict things that are happening in the moment. Uh, the short story of this is like when I was in Chicago, when I was in the Navy, I'd always had this feeling, and, and a guy was working with me in the computer next to me. We was working in the computers, and uh, I was telling him about it, and he was like, I don't believe you. <clears throat> and I said, look here. I said, I cannot use my, my gift I'm calling it a gift. You can call it what you want um, for profit. Like, I can't go and think of lottery numbers. I've tried. I've tried to use it to my advantage. It does not work. It only works when I don't want it to. Or unless I'm, you know, it's crazy. So, it was a Cubs game on. This was 2003, 2002, 2003. And we couldn't, we wasn't allowed to watch TV. But I was watching it on, like, the little game cast where they, you know, go play by play. And he was like, I don't believe you. He's like, if, you, if, if you're telling the truth, then tell me what's going to happen. And I can't just say it. I had to think it. So it was on, they were in the middle of innings, and I sat there, and I thought, and I had to see it through my mind. And I told him, like, this guy's going to get up there. He's going he's gonna to swing twice, whatever it was. He's like, I can get a hit. And I was like, the next guy's going to get out. And the next guy's going to do this. And it was like five people. And they ended up with four people, three people on base. And I, and I even predicted the grand slam. You know how hard it is to predict a grand slam? Before an inning starts, even to predict one person getting on, and exactly what I said, the same batters and everything, <clears throat> right down the line. This guy was freaked out, right? This happened to me my whole life. I just don't really talk about it because I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Um, so, um, this was before, right before this happened. Uh, I don't know, I'll backtrack on accident. And once whatever story comes to me, at first I tell. Um, so, before that, uh, I, have, I was in the Navy and I got in a car wreck and my leg was messed up really bad. So, I was at home for almost a year getting medical treatment, and uh, they told me when I got healed up, I'd have to go back. And I was freaking out, you know, I didn't know what to do, you know, I was, you know, on my deathbed for a whole year. <clears throat> so I went to this church I grew up going to. I had a great relationship with a preacher. I was friends with his kids, they were all my age. And uh, you know how, if you've been to a Baptist church or a church of God, there'll be times when they'll uh, say the prayers, you know, anybody got a prayer request, and then they'll do silent prayer requests. Everybody bow their heads, you know, raise your hand, stuff, so nobody can see it if you're embarrassed. And that sort of thing. And uh, I was sitting over there about halfway in the pews on the right side. Uh, there's about 30 people there or so. And everybody witnessed this. And I'm sitting there and, and my heart hurt like so bad. And I know God. I mean, I'm in the house of God, but God knew what I was in there for. You know when you get that hurt, he knows what you're feeling and saying. So the preacher gets up there, really nice guy, like I say, right? And... Uh, he gets up and he's like, all right, everybody, you know, go to bow your heads. And I'm over there like crying and shaking and stuff. And he goes, all right, everybody go to bow. And he stops mid-sentence. And he says, wait a second. And everybody looks around and he says, Mr. Mud. He's like, come up here. And I'm like, what did I do? And I think I even wore my Navy uniform that day. I, I believe I did. I just wanted to show off, you know, my, uh, my, my dress whites. He said, uh, God just told me in mid-sentence. For you to come up here. And I was thinking, God just told him for me to come up there? And while he was talking about what the prayer, you know, request was going through, 
everybody was talking about their prayer requests, and I'm over there, and I'm saying this prayer like, God, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. And I was suicidal then. I mean, it was bad. It was like, I don't want to hurt myself. You know, whatever. The, I don't remember this. It's 2003, so I don't remember what I said, but there was a sentence I said, a specific sentence about how, how I was, and I needed this, and I needed him to do, help me do this to get through life. You know, like I was hurting really bad. So he says, come up here. And, I'm, and I don't like getting in front of crowds at this point. I wasn't good with cameras and stuff like that back then. It's a long time ago. Changed a lot. So I go up there and uh, he puts his hand on my shoulder. And yeah, I'm already like, you know, I don't know if anybody been to Pentecostal Church of God, but it gets a little crazy in there. He says, Chris, he said, God stopped me and said, he wants me to say something for you. And I'm like, what is this guy talking about? You know, he said, God said, and at that moment, everything he said after that moment was word for word in the exact sentence and form that I said whatever prayer I was saying while I was sitting over there, like, please God, I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said exactly word for word. It was probably 50 words. Now, how did this preacher, who's 50 feet away from me, I didn't say a word to anybody, know exactly what I said because God told him I needed this prayer really bad. So God told him right then and there, put it in his brain. He called me up there. So we're, so we went to, that was like a Sunday. So I think Wednesday Bible study night, you know, I was telling him about this stuff, but I was, you know, all this prophecism stuff. I didn't know what prophecism was at the time. I was telling him how I see all this stuff and I predict all this stuff and I was scared. I didn't know what it was. He brings out the Bible and he starts going over this prophecism, telling me that people like you back in biblical times is who they called prophets. He said, those people seen things like this. Those people went through the same things you're going through. But back then, they were scared. So back then, they would bring the prophets in. And if they was wrong, you know, sometimes they would kill them. But you, if you had been born in biblical times, is what they call a prophet. He explained it to me. And it made perfect sense. Now I see why I see things. I just never use my gift to tell people because I'm scared about it or whatever. Um, you know, and, and, and it goes away a lot because I don't really use it. Like, I mean, it happened uh, less than two weeks ago when I was on the job site, which I had never been on this job site in the middle of Alabama. And it just, it just, bam, it hit me. And I walked on that site and I was like, and it lasts like 30 seconds to a minute. And I'm just in another world. Like in the movies, when you see somebody jump to another world, you're just paused. And you and it finally it comes back to reality that I dreamt this spot. I was standing right here. This person was right here. This sound was right here. This light was right here. It was the exact same time. All that stuff. So right there, I learned about propsism. Okay, so 10 or so years later, 10 or 15 years later, this was probably 2014, 15, 15 or 16. I'm working with this guy. Really young, so you wouldn't think he would, you know, have a lot of, um, what you want to call it? You wouldn't think he would have a lot of um, wisdom, right? He's probably 21, but he read a lot of psychology books. And Alex, if you're watching this, you'll know, you know, you know I'm giving you a shout out. Really smart guy. Didn't read, you know, he knew so many scholars and so many things about psychology and he just didn't put it to use. Really smart guy. We're sitting there talking. I just went through, I think I just went through my divorce. And I happened to tell him the kind of the similar story I told the guy in Chicago. Propicism, preacher told me all that stuff. And he was like, that's, that's really crazy. He was like, he believed a lot in what you think you think things like, I mean, he believed, I don't know if he believed in God or not. I'm not really sure. I can't remember, but he believed a lot of things like your, your, your vibe attracts your tribe. He's the one who told me that, uh, your mood, like you bring negative energy on yourself or you can bring positive energy on yourself, energy on yourself. And everything that happens to you is the way your mind uses it. Really smart guy. So he had, he said, uh, <clears throat> you're like 30, I think it was 33 at the time. He was like, you're like 33 ish. Right. And I said, yeah. He was like, what time was you, what month was you born? I said, in June. He said, uh, around what, when? I was like, I said, I was born June the 5th, 1983. He was like, June 5th, 1983. He's like, where? And I said, I was born in Louisville, Kentucky. He was like, you know what? He said, you see, you're speaking about this. It makes perfect sense. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so he goes, tell me the story that there was a thing. There was a celestial event that happened around Northern Kentucky. And around June the 5th, could have been the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, doesn't matter. Somewhere in the middle of, in the first part of June in 1983 in Northern Kentucky. That the celestial event that they could not explain happened. I don't know if it was, you know, from the sun rays, you know, how suns, 
beam down and mess up electrical stuff. Doesn't matter. And he said, there's been a lot of people that are your age, if you research it, have came up and said things like you're telling me about being prophets and stuff. And he was like, they were all born in the same week, in the same year, in the same area of the country. And he was like, it's amazing. If you look at all these, the coincidence is crazy. And, and it just, it was, it all made sense then to me, even though he don't believe in God, I believe in God. It could have been a celestial, it doesn't matter what it is, a celestial event. It could have been a sun rays, you know. Um, but you guys tell me what you think. Do you believe in prophetism? You don't tell me if you believe in God or not. It doesn't matter. That's fine. Uh, do you believe my story, which I'm telling you is 100,000% true. If you can believe the preacher, I can get the people. If you don't believe them, and they can get on here and tell you that this is not going to happen to the preacher. I'm still friends with his daughter and son um, and Alex and a friend from Chicago. But do you guys go through similar things? Were you born in the similar time that I was born? Do you have a lot of deja vu? Do you prophesize things? Can you use it for monetary values? Because for some reason, I cannot use it to get any advancement. It only happens in randomness. I have predicted people's deaths. I mean, celebrity and not. I, when I know someone's going to die, I can feel it. And it happens within a day or two. It, it goes a lot farther. And if you guys want to know more, I'll do another series where you can message me directly. But message me in the comments or, 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 or DM me or message me however you want on my social medias. And tell me what you guys think about my story. And if you guys went through similar things, because it's a little freaky and a little supernatural, even though that's my favorite show. It's not related to Supernatural. That's a TV show. But it's a little weird and supernatural that I was born at a certain time where a certain thing happened, and it's been going on my whole life. And these two different people knew about it, a preacher and a scholar. Thank you, guys, and listen to my crazy story. And I hope you all had similar experiences, and you guys can tell me what you think. See you all on the flip side of mud.